Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a simple book and reading tracker in Notion. We'll be making things like reading logs and progress trackers from scratch. So let's get started. So the first step is creating a new page in Notion and naming it Reading Journal. And we'll turn the page into its full width so there's more room to work with. Then we'll just quickly head into Pinterest to find a nice cover photo for our page. As you can see here, I'm looking for a beige library aesthetic to match my reading theme. And now we can head back to Notion to add in our cover photo and a cute page icon. Now with our basic page set up, we'll be ready to move on to building out the rest of the page. So the first database table that we'll be creating is a reading log. So in our main page here, we'll create a full page database called reading log. This is basically a list of all the books that we're planning to read, is in the progress of reading or have already finished reading. So with that in mind, let's set up some columns for this table. Next, let's make a gallery view of all the books that we're currently reading. As an example, I'll add a book in here that I'm currently reading. I think I started somewhere in April. And we'll tag it in progress. Then from the same reading log database, we'll create a new view called currently reading. In the settings here, we we'll want the card preview set to page cover and fit image toggled on. In this particular letters from a stoic book record, we'll upload a picture of the book as the page cover. And now we can see a gallery of the books that we're currently reading. And lastly, we'll just quickly add a filter to only show books that are tagged as in progress. Next, we'll head back to our main page and add in another full page database. And this one, we'll call it Reading Goal Tracker. So same as the previous table, we'll first need to set up the basic columns. So the number column we're calling goal here captures the number of books we are aiming to read for a goal. Next, we'll add a relationship column linking our goal tracker to our reading log. But after creating this column, we can hide it away as we only need it working in the background. Next, we'll add a roll-up column which counts how many books we've completed in our reading log. As this column is for how many books we've actually read, we'll name it actual to make more sense of it. Next, we'll add a formula column to calculate how many percent of our reading goal is completed. And the last formula column that we'll create is an aesthetic progress bar. This formula is a bit long, Basically, it'll fill in the hearts according to the percentage of your goal completed. If you want to change the hearts into another emoji, you can just swap the hearts in between the quotation marks with the emojis that you want. The last database table that we'll create before putting everything together is a list of book categories. So the same thing as before, create a full page database from the main page and we'll name it categories and genres. We'll use a gallery view instead of a table view. Let's add our first category. Again, we don't really need the tags column, so we'll just delete it. Next, we'll add a roll-up column to count how many books we've read in a particular category. And we'll leave the relation setting blank for now. 
Then we'll add a new relations column and this column will link our categories table with our reading log. And now back to the book count column, we can add in the reading log relation. Next, we'll add a nice photo for each of our categories. And finally, we'll give all of these categories nice icons. And also unhide the book count column in the cards. And now that we have all our tables ready, it's finally time to pull everything together. We'll start with adding a little quote at the top to set the scene. To the right, I'll add a navigation drop down to pack away the databases I've created. Next, I'll create two headings, one for currently reading and one for goals and habits. I'll also add in a picture of a bar to use as a divider for different sections in the page. In the left, we'll add in a gallery view of our reading log database. And on the right, we'll add in a table view of our reading goal tracker. We'll customize these views a little bit more later. For now, we'll just add in the rest of the tables first for the look and feel. Let's add in another divider to mark a new section and create another two column block. Then we'll copy and paste two more title blocks we made earlier and we'll name these two wishlist and reading categories. Under the reading categories banner, We'll add in the reading categories for you we made earlier. Under the wish list, we'll add some checkbox blocks to list down books we want to buy. Then just quickly adjusting the size of the gallery cards to small for a better fit. Then again, copying and pasting the divider for a new section here. And the last table to add is our reading log. Overall, it's looking pretty good now. Just gonna quickly turn off the database titles as it's repeated information. We'll also give these navigation pages cute little scroll icons. Let's tie everything together with some example entries. So the first thing I want to do is set a reading goal. We'll give it a title and a description. Then I'll set my reading goal, starting small, so aiming to read around 8 books this year. I'll give my first goal a little icon and we'll come back to this later. Then in the reading log, the two columns at the end is what really ties everything together. So for example, let me select a category for a book. Once a category is selected, the book count for one of my categories in the reading categories view will increase by one. Now let's see what happens when we've finished a book. So for the second book, I'll change the status to finished and just changing the name of the last column so hopefully it makes more sense. So basically, if I finish a book and attach it to a goal, we can see that the progress for the reading goal that we selected has increased. Lastly, I'll just hide this percentage column as we only need it working in the background. 
That's the end of this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please leave a comment or give this video a like. Happy reading and I'll see you next time.